Yeah, so we have been going on probably one or two dates a week for almost two months now. So it's been a bit. And um, I think we took it to a sexual level probably the third date. Um, And again, at that point, I wasn't taking it seriously either because I thought I was going to be leaving town. Um, But I will say that I think our dates have been a mixture of um, kind of casual going out for drinks and um, recently at least more um, serious feeling, I guess. So he made me dinner and we've been kind of doing like more um, low-key, like kind of relationshipy type dates instead of just going out. How did it morph from kind of just the casual feeling, do you think, into something a little more, like you said, I love that word, relationshipy. <laughs> <laughs> um, I definitely made a comment here and there about how we were doing a lot of late evening dates and weekends kind of going out to bars and stuff like that. And so I think he might have picked up on that. I hope he did. And um we've kind of gotten to know each other a little bit better through the dates that were kind of more relaxed. Yes. What I'm hearing is that you fear what I talk about in terms of a man putting you in one category or another, which is the Freudian stuff I work from, uh, which is the deep, deepest male brain Madonna whore dichotomy. And that is from the start, a man will put us in one or the other category, meaning woman to possibly have for more, meaning wife, potential mother of children perhaps, or girl just to have fun with. What I'm hearing is that you feel because of the way it started out and you were going to move that your feeling was that it wasn't going to be anything serious. So you considered that he felt or got the impression that it was the same. Yeah, definitely um, worried about that. He might have put me in that category um, and how to make sure he doesn't think that way make sure that he doesn't continue in it yes because it seems pretty apparent that when we go into it like that he is going to get that impression that's kind of a given right because a man feels that if you are in the first category meaning Madonna of Freud's Madonna whore, which I hate the word, hate that it's Madonna whore, which wish it could change, um, but it is what it is because it comes from, you know, 1912 um, or something, when Freud quantified it for us, qualified it, meaning it's always been in the deepest reptilian male brain to quantify or qualify each of us into that category and men do this now in a number of ways not just in a very uh, caveman biological way that they used to but it's there and it's just part of them just like it's part of us to connect and bond through time and sex and we don't really have a lot of control over that And they don't have the control. In other words, they don't make a choice to do it. It just occurs in a nanosecond in their male brain. And we have to do our level best to steer it in a certain direction. So what a man believes is that the woman in the first category will make sure that from the outset... The man knows it and he adheres to a particular way of relating and dating that gives her the utmost respect and not any feeling of anything being casual. And this is what really sucks for us, especially 
if you're now in your 20s, um, certainly younger, and certainly 30s, even 40s, uh, because it's always there in the male, but in the age group of 30, specifically 30 and below, and certainly it could be 40 and below at this time, or even older at this time, is that there is this casual approach for everybody. And if you've heard me talk about this all the time, the worst possible thing is that feeling of him just being able to hang out with you if you are interested in him. Because that doesn't ramp up his need to achieve and nor does it put you necessarily in the right or wrong category. It's just confusing to him. You see, because of the black and white, on or off, stop or go, yes or no nature of this deep reptilian thing in their brain, Madonna whore, is that to them, it needs to be overt and clear. So it can be exceedingly confusing to them. And then we have to work to change it if we've allowed it to be casual. Not that it can't be changed, and it can be done so if the man has enough feeling for you and what you do through time. And this is what I work with in terms of coaching with women to actually change that to allow the man to step forward and be able to commit. Because this is the thing. If he doesn't have you in the first category of woman to be wife and possible mother of his children, and you're in the second category of one to just have fun, he can't commit. And that isn't his insecurity or anything about him. It is a biologically set thing for him in his deepest male brain. I actually think that through my kind of conversations I've had with different guys on dating apps, um, I've noticed that they're all way more comfortable with the idea of something casual or the potential for things to be casual. And so sometimes even I've kind of experimented with taking a really casual approach to a conversation. And um, I think that that gives a much more positive reaction in the beginning. Um, but then I see how it doesn't materialize because it's not we're kind of taking guys down that path that it would, take, it would take to get into a place where they could commit. But the positive reactions in the beginning make it kind of appealing to take that approach sometimes. It is so true. It is absolutely so true because, see, the a man will kind of take the lead from the woman and do his level best to keep it casual and keep you in the second category. Yeah, exactly. He wants, yeah, he wants every woman to be there because that makes it easy and fun. He doesn't have to think. He doesn't have to be anything special. He doesn't have to step up to the plate. And this is the kind of oxymoronic thing that happens that makes dating very complex in this way. Because you have to walk this fine line so that if the man can be a potential buyer for you, that you're not doing something to immediately say no, immediately turn him off, immediately say, wow, you know, I don't want to deal with this, right? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, you don't. However, it it doesn't help either to make it super easy and simple because of two things. One is it doesn't ramp up the man's 
need to achieve. And I talk about this all the time of being a man's worthy opponent. The idea is that with every guy, we can know so much about how he functions vis-a-vis sports. It is simply that, meaning that with every guy, challenge, competition, conquering are his main three C's. Again, when I say every guy, of course, there are always exceptions to the rule. But generally speaking, we as women like the most uber males. And they are all about challenge, competition, conquering. And so they derive the most pleasure and the most satisfaction out of playing any quote-unquote game or doing any endeavor with a worthy opponent. Otherwise, it's not very fun. So all the time I use the very simplistic example of LeBron James. LeBron James gets the most satisfaction from playing the game with a guy like Steph Curry. That's when it really means something to him. It's the most satisfying game he can have. If he's not able to play with somebody at his level, he'll still play. But it's not as enticing. It's not something he definitely wants to work to win. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. So I think that something that I struggle with in that, and I kind of have been listening to your podcast and trying to follow the advice, is how to maybe like hold back or um, make him work a little bit harder and make it so that he has to have that challenge. Um, without feeling like I'm holding back my, like, true, genuine self. Um, So, for example, if he wants to hang out on Saturday night, and I want to do that too, how do I make that harder for him? Mm -hmm. Right. And it's a combination many times of where you are with the relationship There's kind of three things. Where you are with the relationship, how important it is for you to move him up the scale from just being a consumer that can hang out with you to actually wanting to achieve your time, attention, and affection and possibly be moved into being a buyer. And then your willingness to commit to it, then it's what you say followed by the concurrent action whereby what you say aligns with what you do. And it's a little bit tricky and what I do with women in this situation is work with them on exactly how you do it in a non-confrontational authentic way of showing your value because if we take that analogy of LeBron and Steph Curry neither one of them abdicates to the other and just lets the other treat them like they're not really all that In other words, um, say if, and this is kind of funny, but if LeBron James called up Steph Curry and says, hey, do you you want to just um, head over and do a pickup game? Likely not going to happen. No, it probably would be something like, um, no, I I can't. Um, If you want to get a time with me, uh, here's my... um, 
a secretary or a personal assistant or whatever, you know, maybe I can get you on the calendar in a month. You see? Mm-hmm. So he wouldn't just go and do a pickup game because of his, he's not just somebody hanging out. Now, with a lesser guy, say he's a B league player or in the summer league, and out of the blue, LeBron calls and says, do you want to do a pickup game? I bet you he's right there. LeBron James wants to play with him, right? Do you yeah, see the, exactly. Do you see the analogy? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that's what is, happens here on a very subliminal level. So it's a combination of how you approach it, what you say, and how you show then with your actions to continually make him wonder. Because through that wondering and achieving your time, attention, and affection is actually how a man falls in love. See, we couldn't be more different in how we fall in love. We don't fall in love in that way. That's how a man falls in love. So there's a lot to do is what I, I mean to say. And it's not very easy. It's why I work in a program because there are certain things about, for example, texting that are, are pretty um, standard in terms of piquing his interest and holding back. And those are really easy tweaks that you can start to make and see little changes. For example, always varying up your texting response times that he never knows when he might get your attention and how much he might get. That's also done with another very simple strategy of not asking questions in text. Taking what you would normally ask in a question and turning it around to a statement. For example, on a very simplistic level, um, John texts you and says, Hey, Lauren, how you doing? And you answer, Great, how are you? That's normal, correct? That's what people do. Because they text just like they're going to talk, right? Mm hmm. It's better to be great. It's a beautiful day, and I'm going on a bike ride. Hope you're having a good one, exclamation, smiley face. You see, I turned around what would be asking him a question and made it very kind of nice and soft, but what did I do? I showed him, I have a life, right? I'm Steph Curry and I'm busy and I'm ending it. I'm making a statement. I'm not continuing this. If you want to continue, you got to ask me something. It's the mere him asking and trying to get your attention that has him falling for you, even on the slightest little, very infinitesimal beginning stages. You see? Yeah, I have a question about that, though. Um, so I actually had an ex-boyfriend who sometimes would tell me that I didn't care enough about his life because I didn't ask him any, enough questions. Mm -hmm. and, and so how do you make sure that a guy might still know that you do care about him even if you're not asking him how his day is okay it is again when you're together you see you want to show him when we're together I'm much more mm, kind of involved in that way because you see if he tries to get your attention if we take that little um, example we gave just there and you said 
Great, such a beautiful day. Uh, going out for a bike ride. Hope you have a good one. Exclamation smiley face. Well, let's see if he comes back, right, with something. Does he come back with, um, okay, have a nice ride? He wants to get in the last word and end it. Or does he come back five hours later? Hey, how was your bike ride? Do you want to get together? Something like that, you see? When Yeah, you definitely want the second one. Right. Here's the deal. If he doesn't give you that one, there could be all manner of reasons for him not. What happens for us is that it produces anxiety for us. It's the mere fact of overcoming that anxiety by knowing that it's the right approach to get what you want in the long run, which is the man to fall in love. Here's the answer for the question of the man saying, but you didn't show me enough interest. I want to ask you about that man and that relationship when we come back. Are you online dating or thinking about it? Go to the one love dating test.com and see where you fall on the scale of being expert, adept, or inept at capturing the interest of men who are ready, willing, and able to commit. It's fast, free, and you'll get immediate results. So, Lauren, tell us about this relationship whereby the guy was saying that he felt you didn't show enough interest in him. Okay, so the relationship that I was in um, where that happened was a guy I had dated for almost two years, um, and that relationship ended earlier this year before I kind of started going on dating apps and dating other guys recently. Um, And he had a lot of insecurities that I didn't know about until the relationship ended. Um, And when that relationship ended, I found out that he had been cheating on me for the entire time um, by going on dating apps and going on dates with other girls because he felt like he needed to get that attention um, to feel confident about himself and feel good about himself. So um, that's part of why I kind of decided to go on a dating app and see what that was like because I wanted to know what he went through and how that worked for him. Um, I think that there was a lot of more complex things going on with that relationship as well, but um, I definitely missed a lot of red flags and um, questions I should have been asking because I think I was just scared to even like rock the boat too much. Um, I I think partially because I could tell that he wasn't getting to kind of the place that I wanted him to be after two years. Um, and so I was scared to lose it. But I guess in hindsight, I know that that all worked out for the best. Um, mm-hmm. So he mm-hmm. was the guy that kind of had that insecurity that I was trying to make sure I wasn't, um, you know, that I was asking him how he was doing and what his plans were and always kind of doing that. But then at the end, it came out that he was like, you were too available to me and you didn't you made it too easy for me. And once I had you, then I didn't want you anymore. So that's part of why I kind of buy into a lot of what you're saying is because I've kind of seen it from the side where it didn't work. Got it. Yes. And the the really important point here to know is that through two years of seeing this man, he was cheating on you the entire time. It was projection that it was about you And he was feeling insecure because of what you were doing or not doing. That's projection. Meaning that insecurity did not come from you. In other words, let me ask you about that. Were you showing him or giving him reason to be jealous of you when you went out? I don't think so. I in the beginning of that relationship, it was also pretty casual. Um, And he worked hard to kind of turn it into a relationship. And once he did that, I kind of was like, okay, I'm in this relationship now and I'm going to treat it that way. 
and not really make you work for me anymore because we've kind of already agreed to be together, um, which he needed me to definitely be less available still throughout the relationship, but then at the same time was so insecure in himself that he needed other girls' affection to feel good about himself too. Right. And isn't that a convenient excuse, right, to, to cheat on someone? Mm-hmm. Right? Completely unacceptable. And you want a man that is more well-cooked than that. You don't need that kind yeah. of insecurity and lack of caring about somebody when you've made it clear that you two are in a relationship and then he continues to cheat. This guy has some much bigger issues than anything related to what you were doing and or showing him or not showing him. That need you can't fill. No one woman is going to fill that. It's not about you. Yeah, he definitely kind of expressed some of that towards the end. And so now I'm just trying to take what I've learned from that and um, make sure that I'm kind of calling out any red flags that I see a lot sooner as well. Um, But also just fortunate that I got out of the situation that was not going to end well. Yes, it would not have for sure. And it didn't, right? It's that's absolutely the case and it's it's a very immature stance for anyone to take male or female I'm not impugning it because it's male that attention seeking and need of reassurance by others is a very immature developmental thing He's, however old he was, going on 15 rather than whatever age he was going to be. 32. <laughs> right? It's, it's not anything that you want for a man to possibly be your husband and or father of your children. It wasn't anything that you did or not because we have to do what we know to work with the kind of man that we need and want. In other words, when you do these strategies and approach, take these approaches with men that are cooked, know who they are, are interested in something more committed, permanent, long lasting, what have you, they will be challenged in a way that suits their need and moreover causes them to fall in love. They will not feel insecure through it. Does that make sense? Yeah, I, I think that makes a lot of sense and it's definitely a testament to kind of looking for the right value and the guys that you're dating. So um, I think that the guy I'm dating now definitely showing like he'd be more receptive to this kind of thing than the previous guy was. Great. And you can do uh, the kind of few pronged approach that allows you to say what you would like, how you see things now, because you've been dating how long? Um, about two months. Ah, just two months. And mm-hmm. would you say, like you did, you said it's not quite as casual as it was when you first started out? Yeah, but at this point, I'm kind of wondering, you know, are we going to move forward more? Um, I think that sometimes I'm really impatient, so I just want the guy to be, like, sold so quickly on me, and so it's hard to um, kind of hold off. But I think. At this point, I am i don't even know if he is dating other women. I don't know if he is looking for a fierce relationship um, because I didn't ask those questions in the beginning and I didn't set up that expectation 
um, early. So now I'm trying to figure out how to bring it up without it kind of squashing the fun and the romance that we have already. Mm -hmm. So this is a fairly easy fix given what you say and do, but it takes a great deal of commitment on your part to actually do it and find out the truth. Because if you do it, you will know through time what he's willing to do and how serious he is willing to make it. This is what my lure him in program really is all about. Because without that, without us being the mechanic of the relationship, he will just be the man driving along without any GPS. We set the GPS. And either he follows and it's turn left here, turn right here. I need it to go straight here and straight towards something. He won't. He doesn't need to. And that's the puppy principle at work. You love all puppies, right? All big, small, short, tall, and you'll take whatever love when they run up to you and love on you, right? They're all cute. They're all wonderful. And it takes a number of things to happen. We need to be in a place of saying, okay, this puppy that's coming to my door, this little stray that's coming to my door each day, wow, I'm kind of falling for it. Am I in a place of being ready to adopt? So I hope he is and he said things that make me think that he is. Um, But I also don't want to just outwardly ask him that um, Mm -hmm. because I kind of think that you don't necessarily get what you want by telling a guy, hey, I need you to be serious or let me move on. Right. Um, And I don't want to put any kind of pressure on him. I just want him to, like, self-select and decide that he wants to do that. Yep. And that's what it is. It is standing in your value, never asking him. It is saying what is your value and where you've decided to take your life in the moment. It is the Steph Curry LeBron analogy. It would be like LeBron keeps calling Steph and trying to get pickup games whenever, you know, can you meet me in half an hour for pickup game? And or either one doing it, right? It's not gonna work. They don't do that. It is, no, I'm going to show my value, but it's not impugning one another. It is saying, I've decided that I'm at this place in my life. And for you, there's a very easy event that you work off of in terms of crafting this little quote unquote speechette and then following through on it because you had a life event. You thought you were going to be moving and it didn't have the chance of being serious. Makes sense. Long distance relationships don't work, right? Almost, we can say, without too much exception, unless the man has made a decision to take the woman on as his one meaning they're engaged with a plan to be together in whatever city. That's the man making the decision. And it's not just in his head. It's a formal, presented to the world decision. Because we know women live via their emotions. Men live via their decisions. So when he does that... It can work with a plan to be moving in the same city where it's already 
sign, seal, delivered, he's made that decision and the formal commitment that comes from that. Otherwise, long distance relationships in the statistic is in 14 months, they're done because people can't really live in that kind of, in terms of relationships. Otherwise, it would be working all the time. It doesn't. We know that. Humans don't work like that. So, you had a life change, this life event, which is now you're staying. So, that changes things. And he needs to see that changes things. Or you stay in the just for fun category. You see? Yeah. So to do that, do I have to say, hey, by the way, I wasn't looking for something, now I am? Or can he just kind of pick up on that from Uh the way that I interact with him? Great, great question. Looking to lure back an ex-love? Let Coach Paula help you get back together with a man you realize might be the one for you. Make the next time around a charm with complete commitment. Connect with Coach Paula Grooms on Instagram, Facebook, or at CoachPaulaGrooms.com. Okay, so here's how it goes. And it's pretty simple, but it has to be done kind of strategically. And this is what I do when I work with someone that we take it from step A to step B. We see what he does between A and B, then we make B, and we see what he does between B and C, and we go from there each week, right? Because it's super important. And it's holding ourselves to the commitment and task of seeing if it can work. Because he has to be, um, he does have to be told in a way that shows your value and change. And then he has to be given the chance to make a new decision about it. And it's through then that decision that he begins to feel more deeply for you and take things more seriously. So for you, it would look something like this. When you get together, say when you get together next, What's that going to look like? How will that happen? Is it, again, just, hey, do you want to hang out on Saturday? How does that work? Um, So I saw him yesterday, um, and we kind of talked about what our week looks like and um, both recognize we have a pretty busy week this weekend, probably won't get to see each other until next weekend. Um, But he basically assumed we would hang out next weekend. He said, okay, well, I guess I will see you next Saturday. It was kind of a assumption that that would be the next time we were both available to see each other. Ah, this is great. This is great. What happens in between time? Are you texting? Um, do you talk on the phone? Like, what is it? Look, do you FaceTime? What are you doing in between now and next Saturday when he believes you're just going to hang out? Um, so at least over the past couple of weeks, past two weeks, maybe I have not been initiating conversations with him and, um, he's been texting me almost every day or every other day, just kind of asking how my day is going and, um, just kind of talking very casually. So, um, I usually kind of wait for him to reach out. And that's a must. It has to to be a new norm and that's going to feel very strange because it doesn't feel like then a reciprocal relationship but it is what works for the man and when I say this I mean No more, absolutely not, more than an 80-20 fashion. Even when they say things like, well, how come you don't reach out to me? Or how come you're not texting? Or, you know, you don't like to, to text very much or comments like that. You actually know you're on the right track when you hear that, believe it or not. 
because that means he cares enough about it and is wondering why you're not. When a woman reaches out, she takes away the man's wonder. When you take away his wonder, you take away his active loving. And I know that makes little to no sense to us in any kind of way as women. It is the foundational difference between men and women and how differently we love and connect and bond. So it's great that you've made that change. And that is what I call kind of priming the pump. He needs to see that change on even a greater level going into next weekend because you need to make this change sooner rather than later. The longer you go without this statement that you'll make and showing this change, you stay in the second category and you have less and less and less and less chance to get into the first category and stay there. Here's the rub, really. And the, the really, the salient point, I should say, is that you need to know if he has any ability to go that route with you, actually see and understand that you're in the first category and want to go that path with you. Because until you're on that path, you're just biding time. Until the man is saying, I want to be exclusive with you. We're boyfriend and girlfriend. Let's see where this goes. You're simply just biding time, hanging out, and having a great time and having sex. Not that there's anything wrong with that. If that's what you really know you're doing and choose to do. For example... Had you known, okay, I'm going to be moving in September, maybe that's what you would have done, right, for the summer. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's a slippery slope because generally what happens for us as women, there is none of that really. We will bond and commit through time and sex if we like the guy enough. And here's here's really, like I said, the rub on that is if we don't like him enough, we're not going to do it. If we're doing it, that means we like him enough, and then we have the chance of committing and bonding through time and sex. There's sometimes, right, when it can happen that, okay, it's really just for fun, but that's more rare than we'd like to think. We try to make it that way but if we're really honest with ourselves if we didn't like him enough to do it in the beginning we we probably wouldn't be doing it at all yeah I think that when I agreed to go on date with him in the beginning um I was kind of partially using it as a way to get over my past relationship and partially just kind of like practicing I guess um, because I just thought there was no way it could go anywhere. So, um, you know, I didn't think it could hurt, but now we're in kind of a different situation. Um, I'm basically, I, I, I don't think that's the reason I'm dating him anymore. And you want to be in that position of being the chosen one and eventually you doing the ultimate choosing. But until we as women are in the place where he's chosen us, it it doesn't necessarily work the other way around. So we always do ourselves a favor by putting ourselves in that position of being the chosen one possibly. And in the end, we'll make the final choice. If he's not the one for us, he's not but at least we were in the position of power, so to speak, or in control of our possibilities. Otherwise, they run amok, and it's painful, and we get a lot of heartbreak. And I'm hearing, you know, that there is this possibility for you. You then really deserve to know. It's the finding out that can 
produce anxiety because you think, well, what if I find out he doesn't feel that way? What if I find out he doesn't want to? Is that a fear? Yeah, absolutely. Because at this point, I would be hurt by that. Um, And that's probably part of why I sometimes keep it casual, because then there's no chance of finding out that and feeling hurt by it. I, I love what you just said, because it's so honest. It's so great, because that's the honesty that you really need. Because when you listen back to that and you hear yourself say it, it's like, wait a minute, I deserve so much more, right? You know you do intellectually. Yeah, yeah, I definitely don't need to, like, sit in this position of not knowing. Right. Yeah, you deserve to know. And here's the interesting thing. I have been through this so much with women, my clients, doing this program that what happens is when they do it in the right way that shows their value doesn't make the man the bad guy at all because he's not he's done nothing outside of anything that you've shown him you would accept right he said nothing wrong here Mm -hmm. he didn't set out to do anything wrong and he's not purposefully doing any, anything. He's not even necessarily aware. Yep, exactly. He believes that you're okay. And here's how I know that. You haven't really said that much. And even if you have said a few things here and there, this is what a man knows. Every man. If you're staying, no matter what you are saying, You are okaying the relationship as it is. Yeah. So does that mean I need to not accept the next invitation to do something with him? Not necessarily. It is what you're going to do to prime the pump so that when you get together and you say what needs to be said and then you take the action according to what he says or doesn't say, that's what it's about. So if you follow me on this, for you it would be, you really pull back this week. What do you show by pulling back? You show something is up. Something has changed. Something isn't just copacetic the way you've been coasting. Okay? And that doesn't have to be major. It can be quite small, but you don't answer like you've been answering. You don't ask questions, and you certainly don't foster any getting together. So how would that look over the week? By when would he come to you and say, hey, do you want to get together Saturday or Friday or whatever it is? When would that happen? How would that come about? Um. Probably pretty soon he would. He typically tries to make plans pretty early, I guess I would say. And But since we already know that we're both not going to be able to match up our schedules until the weekend, um, I'm guessing that he probably isn't feeling like any pressure to make sure he's made plans with me since he kind of already... I think he already feels like he maybe already did that. Mm, But if it's not really said, you can't just slide into it, right? Even though you think he might feel he's already done that, he does have to lock it down. Will he do that Mm -hmm. by Wednesday, Thursday, Friday and say, hey, uh, just want to make sure we're on for tomorrow night. Will he do something like that? Yeah, I think so. Okay. Now, if you prime the pump by not being as effusive or interactive with him over the week, he may get the feeling that something's going on. Would that be the case? Mm -hmm. Or no, he won't even recognize. I think so. Okay. So what are you going to do when you get together? Are you meeting him with friends at a bar? Are you uh, going to dinner? What would you be doing? 
Um, well, he did tell me that on Saturday he is attending a baby shower during the day so that we'd probably meet up after that. Ah, okay. So would that be for, like, early dinner or dinner? Yeah, probably around then. Okay. So you just accept it and you meet. So say you meet for dinner. What happens afterwards? Because couples at this point probably get into some kind of routine, a la, you know, he says, well, do you want to come over? Or how about we get uh, wine and go back to your place? Like, what happens? Yeah, it's usually been um, either go to another restaurant to get a drink or go to my apartment because I have a dog. So usually we'll go back to my apartment and um, bring a drink here and hang out here at my place for most of the rest of the night. Okay. And then he would stay? Yeah, he's in a pretty routine, um, like it's pretty predictable at this point, yeah, that he would stay. Okay. So you could do it one of two ways. You could do it actually one of three ways. So when he says, you know, so let's meet for dinner, um, is it possible for you to say, uh, like, do, do you meet up or does he pick you up? Um, he usually comes to my house and picks me up. Oh, okay. So, perfect. So you say, um, can you come in for a moment before? Or does he just wait outside? How does it work that you actually get in the car and go together? Um. Well, it depends if we would be walking because I live pretty oh. close to a lot of places. So mm-hmm. usually we would walk, but um, yeah, he'll come in sometimes. Okay. So you'd want to make that happen that he comes uh-huh. in. Okay. And it looks like this. You Maybe you have something to drink and say, hey, I wanted to take this um, time to to just talk if we could before leaving. What would he do? Um, I, I think he'd probably be pretty surprised. I guess I'd, I'd, I'm just worried about doing something like that that might seem really serious or mm-hmm. out of character since I, mm-hmm. that would be so much more serious than I would mm-hmm. normally be. Mm-hmm. And that brings up anxiety of showing change and that you're worried mm-hmm. that how he's going to react to that. This is what it's about because if you can't, get over that, right, it's going to stay the same. Here's what it would look like. So he takes a drink, you have whatever there, and you say, you know, I, you might have noticed that I wasn't very um, responsive this week or something like that, right? And what I'm saying is you prime the pump. Maybe he will have said it or he'll say, yeah, I noticed that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, I... I wanted to talk before we would possibly go out because I feel like you deserve to know some things and I just want to be really transparent and fair. What do you think he's thinking if you do that? Um, either that I've been like hiding something or that... Um, I'm about to tell him something bad. So you're getting him ready, but it's not something bad, right? It's not. So you say all good things about him. So, Blake, I just want you to know that um, I really enjoy all of our time together. And when we first met, you know I was at a place of believing that I would be moving. And so we started off in a very casual way. And that was great. And I've enjoyed getting to know you. And, you know, I I like you. And this has been, you know, really cool. And you can even say something, you know, I really like that you are, and then give him some kind of compliment that you are, you know, a real gentleman or that you, you know, you connect with me in a way that feels authentic and I feel like we have things in common. 
And so I feel like you deserve to know where I am, but most important, I need to tell you where I am. And that is that now that I've discovered I'm staying and staying with this job, I'm looking for something that is leading toward something with the possibility of something meaningful and something solid. You have to use a word that is indicative of what it is that you want. Given that it's just been a few months, I like something solid, something exclusive, something like that. And I'm not someone that sees multiple people at once. I'm, it's just not me. And I want you to know that so that this is completely transparent and that we're not on different pages. I've been in relationships where we're on different pages and it just never comes to a good end. So I wanted to tell you this now and see how you feel about it. What would he do or say, do you think? Um, I, I think that based on some of the signs that I've seen, I'm hoping that that would be received positively, but I guess I just don't know. And that's part of why I haven't said anything yet. Um, I mean, there's definitely positive things that have happened. Like, um, I've met his friends and his roommates and that to me is like a really positive sign. Um, and mm-hmm. so I think, you know, but I've also been kind of burned with that thinking in the past where I thought, oh, you know, I met his parents, therefore he can't possibly be right. seeing other women. And then, right. and then he was. So I don't want to assume anything um, yes. based on that kind of thing anymore. Yes. Mm-hmm. And you need to hear something like, okay, you know, I'm certainly on board with that. And if you hear something along those lines, you just have, you know, one more question, which is, what does that mean to you? I kind of told you where I am. You know, I kind of need to know before continuing what that means or looks to for you or looks like excuse me for you and if it's something along the lines of I don't know you know I just felt like we were just kind of you know hanging out would you say that if that's that's could be possible right sounds like he's an honest guy um I guess I would need to just be more like stand up for myself and be like well I don't really want to wait around for you to eventually maybe want something more ah but it's more not putting it on him right or even it's just I understand I understand and that's why I wanted to say this to you tonight because that's not really what I'm about and what I'm in a relationship for and if he goes well what does that mean and you say well it was important that we had this this talk so that we are transparent and there's no harm there's no foul Um, I just needed to know and I guess we kind of leave things here He's going to be, like, completely taken off guard, right? Yeah. But you see how you didn't say, I'm going to wait for you. If you change your mind, um, you, you know, you need to think about it. You need to decide, right? You're just saying, this is me. This is what, this is what my value is. This is what I know that I want. And I guess then, you know, no harm, no foul. Because he didn't lead you down any garden path at all. Mm -hmm. He was very transparent. He's just kind of going along, which that's what a guy will do. It's not good or bad. It just is, and that's okay. Because it's up to us always to make that determination for ourselves according to what the man shows us. 
And if he says, so what, we're not going to, this is it? That's when you can say, well, you know, yes, because I'm really secure in what I know for myself and what I need. And I, I need to be on the same page with anyone that I'm going to be with. And I totally understand if you're not there or you may need time to think about that if you're there. But I don't want to put any kind of pressure on you about that at all. This is high, high level mechanics that make a man sit up and go, wow, wow, that's somebody special. And it immediately puts you in that first category. Very hard to do. And why I work with anybody who's doing this in a fashion whereby you're completely supported in it and understand the deeper things that are going to go on for the man from that time on, that if there's a chance and you could be that one, he will come back and you've reset things. You've reset your value and then you start off on the right foot or restart, I should say, on the right foot where you're in the first category and you've now helped the man to get there to possibly look at this and it's a then let's find out relationship, not just let's go along and let's just hang out and not talk about it because no good can come from that when you feel the way you do. Because the man could go on forever. He's getting his pretty puppy with him and getting all the licks and pets he wants to without adopting. He's not going to even be thinking about it. He doesn't need to. It's just natural normative. It doesn't make him bad or, or, or not. It's just that's what the man does. And it makes sense that he does that. If he likes you enough... He might need to go away and miss you and then he resets it in his mind through feeling differently and wondering and that he doesn't want to let someone of his caliber, right, the Steph Curry to his LeBron, go. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Um, I definitely have to kind of prepare to say that, but I Mm -hmm. think I should. You have to prepare. You have to prepare really well because the more he sees that you're comfortable in it and you have that conviction of your own value, it's a game changer. It makes him sit up and see you in a way that heretofore he did not. And that can happen in... It can happen in a very short amount of time or can take a little bit longer. But it's through doing that and then no contact. Have you heard about no contact? Mm hmm Yeah. Through that, that he gets into his deepest feelings possible and then makes a decision. Because he lives via his decisions. He needs to make a decision and then come back. And then you reset your value and you can restart things from there. It's a game changer. Yeah, I definitely think I should um, try to make that switch in his mind. So hopefully I can figure out how to do that. Yes. And again, that is something that if you want to talk off the air about that and more how I can help you do that, if you want to think about working together because you get it, you get the need to do it, it's the devil's in the details and the understanding because everyone has um, a tolerance level. Uh, The need to be authentic is huge and he needs to see that, but it's also that. Any chance you have of not committing to it and thinking, oh, it can wait, or, oh, my friends think that's a bad idea, 
or uh, he's, a, a guy needs to just feel that it's easy and there's no pressure and, you know, all of this stuff that we hear, it doesn't work. It doesn't work to allow two things to happen. One is, if he has no need to achieve your time, attention, and affection, and he has no feelings that way, no matter how long you go, that's not going to change. A man is most interested in you at the beginning. Until he makes his decision that you are the one and the one to commit to, Allah, adopt, that's when the feelings can get deeper. But if you keep going along and just playing with a pretty puppy and you don't make any decision about it, knowing that somebody else could come along and adopt that puppy and you let that happen, well, what does that tell you? You either weren't very interested in adopting and you had no chance of adopting or that wasn't your puppy. You see? Yeah, I do. Mm -hmm. And it's that kind of standing in your value that really makes him sit up and make a choice. Because if he's not making the choice now, it will not get more chance of that down the road by continuing to stay in the second category and that it's just mm, without a GPS so to speak, with, with no just getting in the car, having no destination point, and not programming the GPS. You can ride around in circles forever. And since you know now how you feel and that there's been this catalyst, which is you staying, it totally makes sense for you to be doing this. And it can make sense at any time because really what it is is the woman coming to the point of this is my value and I know it. But this is great because you actually have a catalyst. Yeah, I guess my only question with that is that I had decided maybe a month ago that I'd be staying. So Mm -hmm. I don't know if it's too late. Nope. It is just through this time of really coming to terms with my staying and getting to know you, you see, to both ends, Mm -hmm. I've realized some things that I think it's only fair for you to know because I want to be transparent. Yeah, I guess one thing I worry about is coming off... um, I guess there have been times where we've been together that he's told me how much he liked me and I'd say, oh, yeah, I I like you a lot too, like things like that. I don't want it. It's like I think he knows kind of where I stand or I would think he does. Until you decide that he, what he knows now, this is what he knows. Sure, he knows you like him. He likes you. That's not an issue. If you're staying, no matter what you're saying, you are okaying the relationship as it is, meaning the casual, that you are a woman who goes along without needing to know where a man stands. That doesn't put you at, we, we started off with this way about you want to know how to be in the category that's going to allow him to come forward with more. You need to make this change so that he doesn't continue to believe that you just fall into something or do whatever casually because now yeah okay you're staying. yeah. So I'm happy to talk more about you off the air but I'm going to end the podcast now so um I'm going to thank you so much now for being here. Thank you for having me. It was very helpful. Absolutely. It is so important to know these principles about men because while we can think of ourselves as exceptional women, we don't want to think of ourselves as exceptions to the rule because if we're exceptions to the rule, 
then we can get exceptionally hurt. Men are longing for women who show their value so that they can feel safe and secure to take them on as the possible wife and mother of their children. And regardless whether children are going to be involved, it is knowing that they have made the right decision for a woman that can be trustworthy and not cause them to be outwardly shamed by failure. Huge for men. So huge. We women don't have that in us in the same way. So it's, I love the fact that Lauren is only 25 and is getting this in the way that she is. Wow. So ahead of the game. Because the culture now is you just hang out, you just make it easy for a guy and everything's casual, easy breezy, and just falls into place or not. And unfortunately, because males, in their mind, it's not that. And they're looking for and waiting for that one that will, quote unquote, make them step up to the plate. And it's, it's so oxymoronic in how we have to approach things because we just want to be our open book selves, the way we relate to other women and to verbalization. And with a man, it has to be a very unique, balanced combination of verbalization followed up by action that comes from a place of honesty, authenticity, and our value that doesn't impugn the man for anything, but allows him to see that we stand in our own value and make our decisions for what is right for us out of respecting ourselves. That's what a man desires most in his potential or future wife. He may not be ready. He may be in the state of being a consumer. But if you do it this way, regardless, in the end, when he turns around and is in the state of being a buyer, he will come back with a pretty puppy that showed him her value. I send the best to all of you out there who are in a position like this. I want to be helpful to you. I give tips and strategies, advice on Instagram, Facebook. I'll be doing a lot more in this coming year on YouTube. You can connect with me here by going to realcoachingconversations.com and we could be talking on a podcast. Otherwise, get my book and after reading, you can have your own destiny detailing call. We can see where you are with things and I can help you work out just as we did here, what's needed. And then we go from there, like with Lauren, to work together through GPS, the groom positioning system, set things on the right path to the goal of complete commitment. And that starts with three little words. We first and foremost must make him wonder. Thank you for listening to Make Him Wonder. 
If you've benefited from today's conversation, please subscribe and share. Connect with Coach Paula at MakeHimWonder.com. There you can take several relationship evaluations, discover her books and other resources, and find out if one of her personalized coaching programs might be right for you.